Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and it's NVIDIA Shield Week here on the channel because we got in the tube the other day. We did a pretty extensive review of that and I just got my Shield Pro in. And what we're going to be doing today is looking at some of the differences between the Pro here and the Standard Edition. And I'm also going to talk about some of the things I'm disappointed about with this year's Shield releases because from a performance standpoint, this is exactly the same product we've been seeing over the last four or five years. And that's not a bad thing, but I was hoping the Pro Edition here would deliver some performance boosts that NVIDIA's been marketing. But I think for what most enthusiasts are going to do, there is no performance boost to be had. So we have a lot to talk about in this review. Now, I do want to let you know, though, in the interest of full disclosure, that I paid for the Shield Pro here with my own funds, along with the tube. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approve what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this new device is really all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. Uh, this costs $199. That gets you the box here and the remote control. By comparison, the tube that we looked at a little earlier in the week uh, will sell for $149 with the remote control. So this one's $50 less. They perform about the same. Uh, but the tube has less RAM on board. It has two gigabytes of RAM versus three gigabytes in the Pro Edition. Uh, the Pro Edition will also run 64-bit apps, uh, whereas the tube will not. So if you're looking at running the Dolphin emulator, for example, which is that GameCube emulator that requires a 64-bit Android OS, that is in the Pro. It is not in the tube. Uh, so there are some reasons why the Pro might be a little better this year versus the standard edition model. Uh, the Pro will also allow you to install a Plex server on it. Uh, the Tube, though, does not. And those are some of the key differences here between them. A few of the other new features that are on the Tube are also on the Pro here, namely Dolby Vision HDR. That's a feature that was lacking on prior editions of the NVIDIA Shield TV. It is now available on both editions here. Uh, these also have something called AI upscaling, which tries to sharpen lower resolution video when you're playing back on a 4K TV. I covered that with the tube when I reviewed it earlier in the week. I wasn't all that impressed with it. It does sharpen things up a bit. It looks nicer with faces than it might with other things that might appear on screen. And like many of these filtering effects that are built into our televisions, I don't think it's all that great and I don't think it's worth upgrading for because there are some scenes that get super sharp and begin looking more like video uh, versus perhaps a softer image that filmmakers might have intended. And I get very nervous about these filters that start messing with the imagery that directors want you to see. And as such, I don't think the AI upscaling is worth it. And that is why I am leaving it off on my devices. Uh, the only reason why I am keeping the Pro is because of the Dolby Vision. Uh, I have a 4K OLED TV upstairs that supports that. And that's why I'm going with this one. But really, from my standpoint, the Dolby Vision is really the only new feature here. Now, the new Pro has 16 gigabytes of onboard storage, and you can augment that storage with two USB 3.0 ports here on the back. Uh, you'll recall the old Pro came with 500 gigs of storage, so that's a pretty big reduction in storage that you'll get out of the box. So if you are looking to store media on your Shield, you will almost undoubtedly be plugging in some USB devices to do that. Uh, there are no USB ports on the Tube, and the Tube only has eight gigabytes of internal storage, but they did include a micro SD card slot here on the Tube that is lacking on the Pro. Uh, so there are some things you get on one and not the other. Uh, incidentally, back in the old days of the original Shield, this one, uh, you would get all of those ports in one device. So whether you chose the Pro or the standard, uh, you had two USB 3.0 ports. You had a USB OTG port here that was a USB 2.0 speed device. So you had three USBs total. Uh, if you had the Pro, you had 500 gigs of storage built in uh, and you got an SD card slot built in. These 2015 editions are worth keeping if you have one because there's just a lot more flexibility and connectivity and not really any performance difference between this old one and the new one here. In fact, the new one is pretty much the same as the 2017 edition. It's the same exact case. They feel identical. They're very easy to get mixed up and they've got the same port configuration here. So really all you're getting uh, with the new Pro versus the last 
uh, edition's standard model is the Dolby Vision and the AI upscaling, and that is pretty much it. And the old edition of the standard model uh, came with both a game controller and a remote control for the same price. So in some ways, you're actually getting less now than you were before. And it's a kind of a disappointing thing to see a reduction in value here because the game controller was a very nice thing to have built in, especially given since so many enthusiasts buy these things in the first place to play games on them. Now you've got to buy that game controller separately. Now, the NVIDIA Shield was really ahead of its time when it first came out. It was the most powerful TV box on the market by far, and it still is today, believe it or not. There's not much that comes close to it. And the reason is, is that NVIDIA envisioned this as the go-to console device. It was going to be your TV streamer, and it was going to be your game console. It did okay on the TV streaming side, but not so much on the gaming side. And as such, competitors never really tried to match it because developers weren't writing software to take advantage of the hardware. The hardware inside of this eventually became the Nintendo Switch, which of course has done very, very well in the marketplace. So the Shield still has a place, uh, but it's not really getting the market penetration that a Roku or a Fire TV might get. And it's really become something that us enthusiasts really like to use for home theater purposes. And a lot of you are using it also for game emulation. Uh, now, what they advertised on this new device was a new chip, the X1 Plus, which was a slight upgrade over the prior edition CPU and GPU. And they were saying that you were going to get 25% more performance. Do you out of this? Unfortunately, not. Let's take a look at my 3D Mark Slingshot benchmark test that I ran a little bit earlier. Uh, there we got a score of 5,148. If you look at all the other shields that I've reviewed here on the channel dating back to 2015, you can see the scores are pretty much within the margin of error of each other. So in other words, this thing performs exactly the same as the prior editions do for the things that gamers care about. And incidentally, the tube here also performs the same as the Pro on that very same test. So this is not going to give you a 25% performance boost uh, for the things that I think a lot of people care about on the Shield. So just be aware of that. However, when we look at other current TV boxes, uh, namely the Apple TV 4K and uh, the Amazon Fire TV Cube, the second generation, this is still besting those. Uh, the iPad uh, from 2017 has the same chip as the Apple TV. You can see what the score is there. Uh, that one is below our NVIDIA Shield here. And of course, the Amazon Fire TV Cube, while the best performing Fire TV box ever made, is still way behind what the NVIDIA Shield is capable of. So there really hasn't been any market pressure to really come out with something dramatically more powerful. And the reality is, for most people, it's going to be more of the same, but at least the same here is a good thing. Now, one thing we could not run on the new Shield tube uh, was the Dolphin emulator because this requires a 64-bit Android installation. Uh, but it is, of course, running here on the Pro, which does support 64-bit apps. Uh, incidentally, all of the older Shields can support this as well. Uh, so really, the new Shield tube is the only one that can't run this emulator. Uh, but unfortunately, we're not seeing the 25% performance boost here either. It's running about the same as it does on my other Shield devices from way back in 2015. So you'll get decent frame rates in games like Wave Race here, but you will see frame drops. It won't consistently keep itself at the 30 frames per second that this game demands. And of course, there are other games that uh, won't run very well on here. So if you were hoping that this new chip was going to give you enough of a performance boost to get some of that high-end emulation going here, uh, it's going to be exactly the same as where you were before. So if you're thinking of upgrading, this is probably not a good thing to upgrade to. So overall, I'm disappointed with what NVIDIA has put together here for 2019. I think the tube costs too much. This should be a $99 product. And I think the Pro has had a lot of value stripped out of it, especially given that two years ago, you could get the same box with the same performance and get both a game controller and a remote control in the box. That was a good value. This is less of a good value, given that you're paying the same amount of money two years later for the same hardware and getting less stuff with it. Now, that said, I still think the NVIDIA Shield is the best TV box on the market for us enthusiasts. I use mine mostly as a home theater device, and I've got one connected to every TV in the house. 
And what's great is that I can call up any one of my Blu-ray movies I've got stored down here on the basement server. They spin up immediately. On my OLED TV upstairs, my 4K movies come across beautifully in HDR with Atmos Audio. It's been a great experience for me. There's nothing else on the market that does it better, in my opinion, and it's just been a tremendously good ownership experience since 2015. And what's made that experience better is the fact that NVIDIA has constantly updated the box. The box I bought in 2015 is still uh, sitting up there, but it's a very different device now thanks to all of the updates they've put on it over the years. And it's been a constant stream of updates, both security updates and OS updates. And they've done a very good job listening to the community as well because when we have issues, they often work to rectify them and they've been very responsive in the forums and it's really great having that level of interaction with the company. And that's what you get out of an enthusiast box like this. They really are trying to make the enthusiasts happy and largely they have. There are of course things that some people might be ticked off about, but generally it's a very good product for those of us who uh, really want the most out of a TV box, which this one delivers. Uh, but again, I'm just disappointed that we're not seeing more out of this, and I was really kind of put off by the fact that they were selling all this extra performance that most of us won't be able to experience. So all that said, I think uh, if you can get the 2017 Shield, get that one, because you're not giving up any performance. You're probably going to find a game controller along with the remote control in the box. Uh, the game controller has private listening options as well, so you can plug in headphones to it here and listen to uh, audio quietly if you don't want to disturb your partners. So there's a lot of good reasons to try to look for the old one if you can find it. The new ones aren't bad, they just offer less for the same money. And I'm hoping, hopefully, at some point in the next year or two, we'll see a true upgrade to this platform. Uh, because once the Nintendo Switch gets its upgrade, I would imagine the chip in that Switch will find its way to an Android box like this one. And at that point, we'll have the shield we've been waiting for for all this time. Uh, but for now, it is more of the same, and the same is still pretty good. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.